Welcome, welcome to the latest edition of the Philly Sports Dish. I'm the one and only Big Game Dame. I'm here with my main man, Do, and Philadelphia, Kansas City. Let's get into it. I was down there. I saw about 50 fist fights. I saw burning cars. <laughs> it got crazy down there. What do you think? Let's get. Let's start with that overall reaction. Um, I was evaluating. It. I'm gonna tell you what I took positive away from the game. The offensive line. Um, I think, reserves. Yeah, all reserve. I think besides Kelsey and yeah, Kelsey and was Kelsey. Out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember hearing anything. Them call for any penalties. I know it was a lot of penalties, but I don't remember them many negative plays. Some that stood out. So uh, that was my first takeaway. Like we might have two left tackles. <laughs> it hurts at time. Yeah, um, at time. Of course, the defense was just. It was brutal. Yeah, now, and I got a question about that later. Yeah, I want to get to. Now, it's, it's kind of hard because you're probably playing the most explosive offense in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, third and long, I mean, at least once or twice, you got to get off the field. I mean, you, you just have to. So, um, the coach, the defensive coordinator comments this week alarmed me a little bit. And let's be specific for those who didn't hear. Like, um, um, He was talking about – Playing Dom, and he said they don't play Dom. They play nickel. They keep two linebackers on the field. One, I thought that was not a smart thing to say out loud. And two, you know, if I'm opposing teams, I know exactly how to attack you. Yeah. Um, and I don't understand why he has to keep two linebackers on the field. Not to get too te too technical here, but you could bring a safety in to replace that linebacker if you don't have another cornerback that you think is adequate. So um, that's a little concerning. Um, I think lack of adjustments is starting to concern me just a little bit. But like I said, I'm, I'm still just evaluating. So the plus is the offensive line um, look like it might have some depth there. Mm -hmm. And the minus is just the, um, the defense. It's just they, they don't look good. And this is what gets into my question watching this game, sitting there getting roasted in the sun. I kept thinking to myself, this loss is on Jeff Lurie. And this is why. That coaching staff is so green. Yeah. There's no one there. Even when Doug was here, they brought in someone like Swartz, where you had like an older veteran coach. That coaching staff was so green. A lot of just the defense has no identity. They're just out there, mm. in my opinion. They're yogurt, playing yogurt. They're just out there. They don't have a they don't have a philosophy. The offense, you know, the yeah. I'm sure you could hear from television the crowds chanting, chanting, run the ball. Yes, yes. Ran, you yes, know, I, yes. I joined in on that channel. A bit too. <laughs> but, you know, at least at least that's an identity. We know what the offense is going to do. At least Sirianni has an identity with the offense. We might not agree with it. Mm. We do not agree with it. But what is what is the defense trying to do? Listen, I don't know. And, and what is even more puzzling is you have a man to man corner. And you keep playing all this zone. All this zone. And it's just like, so what is the point of Slay? Like, 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 if you're going to play this type of defense, then he's irrelevant. Like, you can you can just plug a cornerback in if you're just going to sit in zone over 95% of the time. It reminded me of Dallas last year where their defense just got completely shredded at the beginning of the year because they bring in a new coach, mm -hmm. new coaching staff, and this is what I can't stand about NFL coaches. It's my system. My system or bust. They do not look at their personnel and say, you know what? I need this is how my defense needs to operate because this is the personnel I have. Instead, it's the inverse where it's like, this is my system. This is the way I do yeah. things. And, and to me, like, I, I, I don't get it. The one thing that I hate as a fan is when I feel like I'm making adjustments at home and the coach isn't on the field for whatever sport it is. And to me, to not double Tariq Hill and double Travis Kelsey and say, listen, if Hartman or a lair beats me. I tip my cap. Great game. How, how do you let ten do that to you? When you have no defensive identity. I mean, when you're are you a are you gonna blitz? Are you gonna attack the other team? No, we're gonna stay in the soft zone. We're gonna rush four, and if Hargrave doesn't make a play, we're done. We were literally saying that in the crowd. Everyone's just like, all right. And this is why I said we said this in a couple podcasts ago. There is talent on this team. 
-hmm. When the positive plays happen, it's because of talent. When the negative things are happening, it's because of the coaching staff or it's because of lack of experience. Another thing I want to point out, too, and to piggyback off what you're saying, the penalties is, is getting out of hand. And that's the coaching staff. It, 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 it's truly getting out of hand. I mean, listen, it, it's enough. And I believe, like, they lead the league in penalties by a nice margin. And I want to see what is he going to do. Like, is there going to be some type of discipline? Because this has been all season. Yeah. And the way I look at it from a teacher's perspective is this. If I have a student who's making the same mistakes mm -hmm. over or a group that's making the same mistakes, and I can't pick up or reteach mm -hmm. those mistakes and correct those mistakes after X amount of time, either – there is some type of impediment where they do not have the ability right now and we have to revisit how we can help them with that or I'm not doing my job. And, and I would say this, Kansas City didn't punt one time during the not game. Once. So benching somebody isn't like that was going to uh, like, oh my God, we can't bench this guy because he's making all these plays. You weren't stopping them anyway. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to prove a point. You know, Barnett, you want to keep doing the silly stuff? It's have enough, a seat. enough for him. You enough. Know, and, like I said, you weren't stopping them anyway. Here's a chance as a coach to make a point. And I, I thought he dropped the ball in that sense. I agree. Mm -hmm. So one thing to close with I want to bring up as well, because that, that's the reason I put this loss on Lori. Okay. Uh, and it's because, like, see, I, you I, have this. Look, it, this is what I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much of this, and I keep hearing this. In your opinion, how much of this in regards to Jeff Laurie is I need somebody who this is the way that we do things. We do all of this analytics. I need a coach. This is why Deuce didn't get the job. Um, one of the reasons I need a coach that's going to be kind of just do what we kind of like. We want to pass. We got an idea where we're going to have this this little our defense is going to look a certain way. You know, I am keep hearing that the front office is a little bit more hands on. Is there anything? Do you see anything to that? Um, I absolutely believe that. But here's what I also think. Just taking a step back. They're punting on this season. And I think they want to get the draft capital. And I think, you know, once the Carson Wentz money, they can spend it next year. I think that's when you're going to see them try to make a splash. But quiet is kept. I don't think they want to be good this year. I think they want the high pick, and they're looking towards next year to start revving back up. Because At least that's my hope. Because if what you're saying is true, then we're in trouble. That's what I'm worried about. So we'll see. Only time will tell. But there is hope. There is a new hope. We have a Luke Skywalker, and I'll get to that during my close. There's <laughs> okay. hope, people. Okay. So – Next thing I want to talk about, uh, okay. now let's go to no hope. <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers. So first thing I want to talk about is the comments that Joel Embiid made a couple of days ago where he specifically was talking about the Ben Simmons thing where he's just like, look, this is weird. We yeah. reached out to this guy. We catered to him. We did everything. We bent over backwards. I'm going to add my own personal thing. I'm going to flat out say it, the fan base – has been more than supportive, of Ben Absolutely. Simmons. Absolutely, Philadelphia had Ben Simmons back. Absolutely, okay. I, I, I'll take it a step further. I'm I'm down there a lot. I've never heard, heard our home crowd boo Ben Simmons. Now I heard him boo and be. Yeah, I've never heard a boo for Ben Simmons, and that's what's disappointing about this. Now, to get back to MB comments, was he right? Yes, but now you got to ask yourself: Was it necessary for him to say? Here's my thing. He's saying that not for Ben, because Ben's gone at this point. Okay. He won't even communicate with them. Okay. Okay. He's doing that for all those other players on the team. Okay. Where he's like, look, and he's taking leadership. And I gotta give him I disagree with a lot of stuff Joel does, mm -hmm. but I gotta give him props on that. Like he's saying, I'm the leader. Here's the deal. This guy, what this guy's doing is abnormal. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, this is our team, and we're gonna ride out with Maxi. And we'll get into that as the season gets closer. But you know you got to give you got you have to look at they're going to put a lot on this young guy okay mm -hmm. you need all these guys to buy in because your talent level is going to drop with Ben not being here true so the talent level is going to drop so you need everybody in and I think that was a good move by Joel where it's like look I'm the captain of this team I'm the leader of this team I'm the best player on this team I don't know what this guy is doing 
I got no idea what this guy's doing. He's somewhere else. We can't worry about him. That's weird. Let's move on. And that's kind of the way I read it. Listen, I, I don't disagree. I think you made some some valid points. Um, he is the leader of the team, and he did, you know, I, I agree with you. That was a good move. I just feel like right now, was it necessary? Like, we all know it. And if the goal is to trade him and try to get maximum in return, then, you know, is being right more important than that? Yeah. And I think at this point, too, like, we all, we all know the Sixers aren't going to get equal, quote unquote, equal value for his talent level. Um, just because, and this, this, is going to tie in with our follow-up on Ben Simmons just because of all of this drama. Like if he would have came in there quietly and tried to push it, push some type of trade, even then after that playoff performance, teams have got to be watching that. Yeah, and teams he, have got to be. This is the thing yeah. that I don't think his people are getting. Yeah, and I I, I agree with that. I think his his uh, his agents are giving him bad advice because unfortunately we remember the last thing we saw. So he needs to come back in, you know, get a triple double, hit some free throws early. Like if he comes in, he plays the first month, and you know he's shooting seventy percent from the free throw line. He has a few triple doubles. Then you erase that stain of last season, and you know, and then we could we can yeah. move on. I, I would have thought the tack would have been, come in, let's do what we gotta do, and if we need to walk away, then let's walk away. Let's come out, put a good taste in everybody's mouth, show them what we can do, and say, you know what, y'all ain't trade us. Now we're gonna sit out. I thought that would have been a more effective approach. It's not Glenn Rivers who's playing hack a band. True. It's the other NBA <laughs> coaches, okay? They know. Like, and that's why when I keep saying there's nowhere to hide, we could play the song from the Warriors. Like, nowhere to hide. Mm -hmm. Like, and this gets into the point. I heard reports, there's reports today coming out from Ben Simmons people, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. That this is a mental thing where just his level of anxiety, just mentally fatigued in the city of Philadelphia, he just needs a fresh start mentally. You know, that's what we're hearing now. But it kind of ties in with where are you going to go? Because he's his people, like you said, I think they're looking at it as a local thing. Mm -hmm. The problem is the NBA is a global sport. Where is he going to go except back to Australia? See, now I. I I understand your point, but I kind of took it like this. They were kind of maybe softening the blow if he does report because now we look bad if we boo him because now he's saying, you know, he has anxiety maybe or, you know, it might be some mental issues there. So that's a way to back the quote unquote Philly crowd up off of him. And from a, str a strategic point, I said, oh, that's not, that's, that's not, a, that's bad, not a bad move. Yeah, but, but here's you know? the thing. I actually think there's validity to it mm -hmm. because that's the most logical thing that's come out of his camp. And, and if you got to be honest, you can't touch it. Like you, you, you can't, can't touch you, you it. You can't sit there and say, oh, well, he, that's not true. Or like, once you say that, it's like, okay. We but it's evident. Like if you look at his form, his form isn't bad. Mm -hmm. Like we know, everyone who's watched the Sixers all these years know that he's got a mental block of some type when quick, it comes to quick his question. Game. Yeah, does this hurt his trade value? I don't think so. I think his trade value stays where it stays. Mm -hmm. His Ben Simmons' trade value is all about if there's a GM and a coach that think that they can fix him, that okay. think that they can make him a Jason Kidd. Develop that sh that open J that Jason Kidd. So let me ask you this then: Your GM that that was interested in him before you know going into the day, you hear this news, it doesn't change your mind at all. I would I would this is what I would think. All right, this is what I thought was going on. I knew that kid had something mental a mental block going on right there. Are you if still gung ho about going to get him if you no. were, or do you say you know what maybe I need to do my homework because no. I need to find out. Look, dude, are you taking look? There's sports counseling. Mm -hmm. Are you taking counseling? Are you talking to somebody? You have a legit mental block here, okay? Now, let me ask you this. Was this another move by his handlers to maybe force the Sixers to maybe take pennies on a dollar? Because now the Sixers looking at how you said, oh, here's another issue. And now, yeah. and now his, his value is tanking even further. Possibly, but this is the way I look at it. The Sixers cannot take pennies on a dollar. You just let him sit. I agree. Because you, you, the Sixers are in a no-lose situation. Maxie is your starting point guard, okay? He's young. He's got talent. He, he 
is not afraid. Okay. Ben is afraid. Moving forward, if I'm the general manager of the Sixers, I'm like, you know what? It might not happen this year, but if we can keep Joel healthy going into next year, we might have something with him and Maxi, and okay. we get some role players there. That's what I'm looking at right now. Fingers crossed, because the Ben thing is done. Okay. Okay. That's the way I got to look at it. Sorry, Ben. Like, that's the way I got to look at it. All right. So before we wrap things up, we're about to go into our clothes. Mm -hmm. I got something I want to say for our clothes. How about anything that stood out to you this week? Anything that just popped out to you hey, in that, the world of sports? That quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers, Justin Herbert, that guy's the real He's deal. He's legit. He's the real deal. And I know Miami got to be just kicking themselves. I mean, they took Tua over this guy. And I'm not going to kill Miami because I think in real time, a lot of people had that type of had that evaluation. Yeah. But man, man, that 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 kid is the real and deal. And that that's what happens yeah. when you, you draft sexy. Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna be honest, the Dallas Cowboys, we'll see if they do something this year. They draft sexy every year. They yeah. win they win the media draft every year. That's what happens when you draft sexy and then Yeah. Herbert, yeah, he's legit. The real deal. Who would have thought it? Yeah. The one that stands out for me is this. All right. People need to people need to give Jalen Hurts time, okay? Like, we didn't get into it. Specifically, I held back on this. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at his numbers, and I'll ask you this. They're the same as Carson. Damn near close. The Super Bowl year. Carson. I, I, I kind of got an idea where you're going, you know, as African Americans. We kind of see it. We, you know, we, we know what it looks like, what it feels like. And, the, and, and you see the, the <clears throat> well, we got to wait on this yeah. guy when Carson was Ginger Jesus. Now, here's the only thing I would say with not ready to jump on that grenade, which is, you know, he was a second round pick. You He's know. a second round pick. He, um, yeah, he doesn't have the does same it, doesn't make, glory. Doesn't make big money. In. You can get out of the, the contract easily. And I think it's a different when you got a guy, you traded so much for a number two pick and it has to work or you have egg on your face. If, if the Jalen Hurts thing doesn't work, the Eagles won't have egg on their face. So mm -hmm. I, I think you got to take that into account also. Yeah, but my whole deal is this. I keep hearing the guy doesn't have an arm. Okay. All right. When you look at the in this, the look at the passes that he has struggled on, it's been because of his mechanics. He's going through what all young quarterbacks do, where they try to think they're Patrick Mahomes. You see uh, Trevor Lawrence does it all the time. They'll try to throw off their back foot. It's the NFL. It's too fast. Players are too fast. It's I get, I, I get you high. exactly. Because we, Aaron Philadelphia, we saw Bobby Hoyan. We saw Todd Detmer. We saw the reaction of the crowd for them. And now we're just asking the crowd, let's just be patient. Let's and just see what happens. We're asking year. the crowd, we're asking the crowd to be patient. And we got a young quarterback who's in his eighth game, who, if you're watching the games and you know what you're looking at, is putting the ball in to the right, correct person almost every single time. And yeah. people are like, oh, he's this guy's not good. I'm not just, I'm not sold on him. I'm not sold on him. It's like, wait, are you kidding me? How many young quarterbacks, like decision making is like that, that quick? already we might have something here that's all i'm saying is just look i'm tired of hearing the stuff about he doesn't have an arm that he's not an nfl quarterback that he's not going to work out it's like if carson was doing this nonsense nonsense i'm starting to get angry if carson <laughs> was doing this right now or just let's be honest if, if gardner was doing this right now it'd be something different yeah, I, I I I I get you. I think and I hate people... to sound like Jalen Hurts' mom, <laughs> like, like, but but I gotta say it. It's like all I'm asking for is time. Yeah, and I, I would say to all Eagles fans, as we've been saying since this podcast started, let's just let it play out. Let it play out. Let, let's What's watch wrong the, with that? Let's watch the season. The Dallas and... game was bad, but young quarterbacks had bad games. Exactly, and you know, um, Jalen, there's people out there that's just reevaluating you. We're going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to judge you when the season's over. Exactly. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> judge the man when the season's over. You got a young quarterback who's making the correct decisions with the ball, okay? And when he makes mistakes, it's usually because of mechanical errors that can be fixed. What is wrong with you people? Just watch the games. There's no Super Bowl this year, okay? You might have something. He's your hope. Hope and get behind him, all right? What's wrong? How about getting behind your quarterback for a change, all right? Instead of the ones that want to run out of town. People are still loving on Carson. He wanted out. This guy wants in. Get behind him. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Go, Birds. Drop Mike. <laughs> now I'm coming to you, Philadelphia, for being a bunch of little spoiled babies. And just think about it this way, and then I'm done my rant. 
Think about towns like Detroit and Chicago. If they had a young quarterback who started the way Hurts did, they'd be right. like, okay, we might have something here. I mean, I get it, but to play devil's advocate, when when you kind of been spoiled a little yeah, bit, yeah, that's you what I'm saying. That's that my way. point. You know, so the spoiled babies. Yeah, I, listen, I get it, and being a Philadelphian, you get it, and you know, yeah, and it's annoying. So <laughs> it's annoying because yeah. it's like we got a young team, we got like give them a chance, and when I hear people not giving them a chance, it's like okay, this is why Philadelphia gets this bad rap. Like seriously, like you're spoiled with your quarterbacks. Philadelphia gets spoiled with their quarterbacks. Had some damn good ones in this town. Grow up. All right? Okay, so should we close before I get in any more trouble? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, we could have a... Uh, let, let's go with uh, Scott Tinsley. That'd be my obscure, obscure reference. Let's get a good kid like Scott Tinsley back, our strike quarterback. All right? Buddy Ryan loved him. That's my obscure reference for this week. All right? Look him up. <laughs> okay. All right, he's just looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm sorry. Philadelphia broke my brain. That game broke my game brain too, all right? So that's going to be it for the Philly Sports Dish for this week before I get chased out of town. I'm the one and only big game dame. This is my man, dude. Next week, Carolina, the Simmons drama continues. So please follow us on all podcast and social media platforms. Philly Sports Dish, we're there. We got gotcha. you. Come on back next week. Till then, go birds.